as only someone who lived through it could. He'll have to love her, won't he? will never be the same. It's historical fiction, The Stars by Matilda Wood, with the map inside. It's the Book of Long. You've never seen the first time she set foot in a class. We are the Falco family. Brian, Serena, Cameron, Kendall, and Savannah. A family of filmmakers exploring the truth about education. Learning to document our adventures in homeschool and life and tell stories of how we live and what we learn. Welcome back and welcome to our channel. I'm Serena and this is the Falco family where we make videos about education and lifestyle. I am back with another book haul, friends. Just hauling through all the things that are on our shelves. You know the deal. When I go through the haul, we'd love to know, have you read any of these? Do you have any of these on your shelves? Is anything on your radar? Let's have all the bookish related discussions in our comment section below. So as always, I try to put these into genre order, but then they get messed up by the time I get around to getting the stack together. So I'm going to start with this stack here. Um, the first one I have is historical fiction. I lived on Butterfly Hill. 11-year-old Celeste is a dreamer, a writer, a collector of words, but then a new whispered word trickles into her life, subversives. Her beloved country of Chile has been taken over by a military dictatorship and subversives, people considered a threat to the new government, are in increasing danger. So her doctor parents must go into hiding to remain safe and Celeste heartsick must say goodbye to them. But the situation continues to worsen. More and more people are disappearing and soon Celeste herself is sent thousands of miles away, all the way to the coast of Maine, where she doesn't have a single friend or know a word of English. How can she possibly call another country, a country where people eat breakfast out of a box, where the cold grays of winter mirror the fears that envelop her home? Will she ever see Chile again? And if she does, what and who will she find there? So this is weaving together history, mysticism, and personal experience to tell a story of a country in peril as only someone who lived through it could. I do have a vlog, all my feelings while I'm reading through it. This is the number one book at the top of Cameron's um, books he's loved list. I lived on Butterfly Hill. Then the second book in Maps of Memory returned to Butterfly Hill. Her greatest dream is for everything to go back to the way it was before, before the dictatorship, before her parents were taken by the general, before she was sent from Chile to live with her aunt in Maine. The Lonely Heart of Maybelline Lane. Most people don't think fate has a sound, but it does. Everything has a sound if you listen carefully enough. 11-year-old Maybelline Lane has been collecting sounds her whole life, but her favorite by far is the sound of her father's warm laugh saved on an old phone's voicemail recording. It's all she knows of him, really. Her mother just says they are better off without him, but now somehow that laugh is on the radio, his laugh, and when her father announces that he'll be judging a singing contest in Nashville, Maybell impulsively signs up. She doesn't know how she's gonna get there or what she'll sing, she just knows that if she can stand in front of her father and sing her heart out, he'll have to love her, won't he? The road to Nashville is littered with bumps and sudden bends, but that's the thing with journeys of the heart. You may find more than what you were looking for. Mercy Suarez Can't Dance. This is the sequel to Mercy Suarez Changes Gears. I showed that in another haul. Seventh grade is going to be a trial for Mercy. Her teachers are tougher, friendships are complicated, and her family is still, well, they always make things interesting. Mercy used to talk about everything with her grandfather, Lolo, but with his Alzheimer's getting worse, who can she trust to help her make sense of all the new things happening in her life? I'll talk about this more in future videos, but it's always challenging. I think it came along because the kids are such more voracious readers than their mama is. And you easily, quickly get into this realm where you can't read things before them all the time. And I found that that ends up being a really great thing for our homeschool and lives. And hopefully I'll get to talk about that more in the future. But you will notice that a lot of these books someone has read, but most of the time it's not always me. So <laughs> I'm excited to finally get through and read through a lot of the stories that they've already been introduced to and then have open conversations about them and sort through some things and really learn to connect on a deeper level in that way. So the next one is The Unsung Hero of Birdsong USA by Brenda Woods. Um, I think this is a historical fiction. We got a lot of doggy-eared tabs in here, which means they were read by at least two of the kids probably. 
Life seems pretty close to perfect in the southern small town of Birdsong, USA. But on his 12th birthday, his point of view begins to change. It all starts when he comes face to face with one of the worst drivers in town while riding his new bicycle. An accident that would have been tragic if Mr. Merriweather Hunter hadn't been around to push him out of harm's way. After the accident, Gabriel and Merriweather become friends. When they both start working at Gabriel's dad's auto shop and Merriweather lets a secret slip. He served in the Army's all-black 761st Tank Battalion in World War II. Soon Gabriel learns why it's so dangerous for Merriweather to talk about his heroism and Gabriel's eyes are finally open to the hard truth about Birdsong and his understanding of what it means to be a hero will never be the same. Next one I have is You Go First by Erin Entrada Kelly. Um, we, like I said, have all of her books, I'm pretty sure, maybe except for one. 12-year-old Charlotte and 11-year-old Ben live more than a thousand miles apart. On the surface, their lives seem vastly different. Charlotte lives near Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, while Ben is in a small town of Lannister, Louisiana. Charlotte wants to be a geologist and keeps a rock collection in her room. Ben is obsessed with Harry Potter, presidential history, and recycling. But the two have more in common than they think. They're both tag kids. They both sit alone at lunch, and they both are trying to figure out how to survive middle school and the unexpected challenges of family. As their lives connected only by an online scrabble game intersect in unexpected ways. The truth is, no one suffers alone. I like the idea of this book, and I'm excited to read through it and see how my mind processes things. But one of the things that stuck out to me the most was this idea of developing friends online. I feel like we have had more opportunities, maybe than most, to really connect and develop friendships online that are just really so pure and so exciting, you know, because <laughs> it's a different kind of world. Um, so we're kind of navigating that space where the kids are learning to make and meet friends um, in online spaces in safe ways, which that's a whole other video. But I think that this story is going to help me add to that like quest in our homeschooling lives. You go first. Reckless, Glorious Girl. This is probably one that isn't going to get read. Does it look better over here? It's not going to get read for a little bit of time just because it's more of a coming of age story that is appropriate a little bit later down the road. So I think I remember that being what I was thinking when I added it to the cart. <laughs> it was at a good cost, so I always like to throw those in there when um, it makes sense. So in the summer before seventh grade, Beatrice Miller has a lot of questions. Who am I? Who will I become? And will my outside ever match the way I feel on the inside? She adores her mom and her mama who give her every bit of wisdom and love they have. And she has two best friends who have had her back since elementary school, still through the ups and downs of the seventh grade cliques, first crushes, puberty, and her developing identity. Beatrice wants more than she has aches for what she can't have and wonders what will the future bring this just seems like one of those stories that will be good to address those complexities of feelings that um, kids have when they're coming of age when they're starting to notice more things about belonging and friendships and all of those types of things so reckless glorious girl and this cover is beautiful tight which way will you go when things are tight by tori maldonado so lately, Brian's been feeling it all kinds of ways. Brian knows what's tight for him, reading comics, drawing superheroes, and hanging out with no drama. But drama is every day where he's from, and that gets him tight, wound up. And now Brian's friend Mike pressures him with ideas of fun that are crazy risky. And at first, it's a rush following Mike, hopping, turnstiles, subway surfing, and getting into all kinds of trouble. But Brian never really feels right acting so wrong. And drama really isn't him. So which way will he go? Especially when his dad tells him it's better to be hard and feared than liked. But if there's one thing Brian's got from his comic heroes, it's that he has power to stand up for what he feels. Um, I like the idea of this. <laughs> To me, this feels like a story that's going to speak to this, you know, pressure to feel cool. Um, so I'm excited to see how this pans out and how we can use it in approaching different, you know, things that are all about coming of age and emotional intelligence. Wish. 
So with a little luck, you can get What You Wish For by Barbara O'Connor. Charlie Reese has been making the same secret wish every day since the fourth grade, but when she is to live with family, she barely knows it seems unlikely that her wish will ever come true. That is until she meets Wishbone, a skinny stray dog who captures her heart and Howard, a neighborhood boy who proves surprising in a lot of ways. Suddenly, Charlie is in serious danger of discovering what she thought she wanted may not be at all what she needs. Unexpectedly learns the real meaning of family in the least likely of places. A mystery. We've got um, the mysterious disappearance of Aiden S. as told by his brother. It's about Aiden who disappears. His family looks for him in every room, under every bed, behind every door. But by the third day, the police are questioning family members and friends. Um, strangers organize searches and his face is all over the news then suddenly as he vanished Aiden reappears leaving everyone to ask where has he been no one wants to know the truth more than Aiden's brother when Liam when Liam asks him what happened the story Aiden tells is simply impossible now Liam has to figure out can you believe in the impossible when everything and everybody is telling you not to these are two in the series of I think there's five in this series one two three four five yeah there is um these are just fun books to just kind of toss in there I don't typically um add these to our library necessarily because of how quickly they um read through them so this this is normally something I just purchase from I mean that I pick up from the library and then we take back but whenever I find them for a super good price you know why not add them to your library so hopefully eventually if i can get like a dollar you know 50 cent type of deal for the rest of this books in this series i'd like to collect them all but this is the great mouse detective basil in mexico and the great mouse detective basil and the big cheese cook-off they're just super fun stories how high the moon this is historical fiction in the jim crow south uh, 12 year old Ella spends her days fishing and running around in a small town in South Carolina with her cousins Henry and Myrna. But life is not always so sunny for Ella who gets bullied for her lighter skin tone and whose mother is away pursuing a jazz career up north in Boston. Um, Ella is ecstatic when her mother invites her to visit for Christmas. She doesn't expect to uncover new truths about her mother, the father she never knew in her family's most unlikely history. Bittersweet and eye-opening how High the Moon is a stunning and timeless debut novel about a girl finding herself in a world all but determined to hold her own. Written by Hillary from The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. <laughs> so that's a fun fact. The next one I have is Escape from Aleppo. This book I've had in our library for quite some time and it's actually one of the first books that Cameron um, read all the way through when he really started pushing into reading more. Um, independent reads um, and really started to dive into uh, historical fiction more. I would be interested to know because it has been several years since um, he read it, if he read it again, what he would think about it. I'm so proud of him. I was so proud of him for making his way through this book. I did not have to push him through it. He just kept on moving. But I did understand at that time that most of what was um, talked about in this book was going to be something that went over his head that he wasn't really going to be able to understand at that time. So uh, it would be neat, you know, to see him read through it again and see if he, you know, can make more sense of it now that he has a bit more, um, he's more matured and has more of an understanding of the complexities of world wars and conflicts and things like that. But um, this is kind of one of the books he was into when he started really diving into historical fiction first. I think it's also um, a really great idea to start with some of the not heavier things necessarily is what I'm trying to say, but the more difficult things to wrap your mind around. And if you can make those fun and exciting for them in a way, then when they move into contemporary and other things, it's just all, you know, up from there. But this is Escape from Aleppo. This is about the conflict in Syria. It is December 17th, 2010, Nadia's 12th birthday in the beginning of the Arab Spring. Soon anti-government protests erupt across the Middle East and one by one countries are thrown into turmoil. As civil war flares in Syria and bombs fall across Nadia's home city of Aleppo, her family decides to flee. So this is current events at the time. It sheds a light on the complicated situation in Syria that has led to an international refugee crisis and tells the story of one girl's journey to safety. So next up, I have The Girl Who Sailed the Stars by Matilda Wood. 
Okay, so this is about a girl whose parents um, were looking forward to having a bold and brave son. So she's the youngest of seven sisters, and immediately her birth was a disappointment. Her father is a sea captain who doesn't believe there's a place for girls aboard ships, but um, she longs for an adventure on the seas and nothing will deter her from setting sail. That's all I need to know, okay? I have Malamander. This one is a fantasy that I will probably end up, end up reading as a read aloud because typically, you know, some stories just lend themselves better to read aloud than others. So here you will meet a plucky orphan, a sinister man with a hook for a hand, a mechanical mermonkey with powers of prediction, an egg that can grant wishes, and an elusive malamander, half fish, half man, who holds the town in its deadly thrall. Some books are just beautiful and you grab so you can figure out if it takes you on the adventure of a lifetime. This is one of those <laughs> kind of stories. Uh, the next one I have is the first book in a series, The Secret Zoo. We read this one and we haven't moved on to the next ones yet, but I love that there are more for us to move along with. So Noah and his friends thought that they had seen it all during their first journey to the secret zoo, but it was only the beginning. Now they must train to become crossers, the members of a secret society who freely travel to the secret zoo and back, helping to defend its borders. So actually, I think maybe this is the, is this the second book? I'm not sure somebody tell me <laughs> I think maybe we read the first book on audiobook or on ebook and this might be the second book I'm not sure so we really enjoyed the first book whichever one this is that must be the second one um, the next one is uh, three tales of my father's dragon we really enjoyed this we read this a long time ago love a good book with a map inside Alma elevator and Boris a baby flying dragon have been entertaining young readers for 50 years <laughs> So this has three books in it, My Father's Dragon, Elmer and the Dragon, and The Dragons of Blue Land. I have my collection. I think this is most of them. I think I might have a couple of stragglers somewhere, but this is my collection of the Who Was books. Who what, who was, who what, you know, what was <laughs> books. We really like these again. These short and sweet little timeline Reference books are great just for pulling out and adding to any um, study that you're doing. So I have Who Was Rosa Parks, um, Who Was George Washington Carver, Frederick Douglass, Albert Einstein, Amelia Earhart, the Tuskegee Airmen, Antarctica, Harriet Tubman, the Declaration of Independence, and Sojourner Truth. Part of our devotion collection, I Am 40 Reasons to Trust God. A pretty good guide for morning devotion. Adult fiction, friends. <laughs> well, one book so far that's adult fiction. This is by Sue Mon Kidd. Um, it's the Book of Longing. She's also the author that wrote the Secret, uh, the Secret Life of Bees and the Invention of Wings. And I've just been really interested in her stories. Um, so she takes an audacious approach. Audacious approach to history and brings her acclaimed narrative gifts to imagine the story of a young woman named Anna. Raised in a wealthy family with ties to the ruler of Galilee, she is rebellious and ambitious. With a brilliant mind and a daring spirit, she engages in furtive um, scholarly pursuits and writes narratives about neglected and silenced women. Anna is expected to marry an older widower, a prospect that horrifies her, an encounter with 18-year-old Jesus changes everything. So thought that was quite interesting educated I loved this book in so many ways and probably need to do um, an additional another video all about why there are a couple of books that I've come across that have kind of in more unorthodox ways have given me just a lot of inspiration and strength to move forward in our homeschool journey I don't read a lot of homeschool books this clearly is not necessarily a homeschool school book but um i really take a lot from people's stories and their journey to be educated and their journey um of education so this is a memoir by tara westover i'm sure you've heard about it 17 the first time she set foot in a classroom that alone is like, <laughs> like where is this going um, born to survivalists in the mountains of Idaho, she prepared for the end of the world by stockpiling home canned peaches and sleeping with her head for the hills bag. In the summer, she stewed herbs for her mother and midwife and healer. In the winter, she salvaged metal in her father's junkyard. So it just goes through the 
gut-wrenching details of her story um, and her journey to move through her family ups and downs to um, to redefine or reconsider what an education is. She taught herself enough mathematics, grammar, and science to take the ACT and was admitted to Brigham, Brigham Young University. She studied psychology, politics, philosophy, and history, learning for the first time about pivotal world events like the Holocaust and the civil rights movement in college, okay? Um, her quest for knowledge transformed her, taking her over oceans and across continents to Harvard, to Cambridge, only then would she wonder if she'd travel too far, if there was still a way home. Um, it says it's an account of the struggle for self-invention, um, a tale of family loyalty and grief that comes of severing one's closest ties. So, loved this book. A nonfiction, Making Our Way Home. It's um, somewhat of a graphic, like mixed, can you say mixed media in a book? I don't know. Uh, way of you know adding resource storytelling and resource coupling storytelling and resource to speak to the great migration and the black American dream so it's an illustrated history of the great migration when six million black Americans left the American South for northern and western cities from 1910 through 1970s Feeling different is one thing most of us have in common. Everyone feels marginal at one point or another. Many kids are coping with extreme circumstances, deafness, dwarfism, Down syndrome, autism, schizophrenia. Families are often bewildered by them and like most children, they struggle to gain their parents' understanding. Each of these identities can feel very lonely, but the experience of being different within a family and within a society is universal. By Andrew Solomon, and he explores how people who love one another must struggle to accept one another and in doing so documents triumphs of love over prejudice. The last thing I have, friends, is 365 connecting questions. I have one for couples, couples, and one for families. And ask the question and see if it sparks some conversation in your family, in your marriage, and these have just been really nice to kind of have. So let's have all the bookish conversation in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that life is so very full of lessons and our goal, as always, is to live and to learn. Bye. Don't forget to subscribe!